When I was eight years old, I went to school. My teacher asked me if I can move to Khalid or go to go to school. I'm not sure. Well, a man can ask if I can go to school, and we left on the. We left to Ekaluit and then went to Montreal school. And she was looking for her mother and keep looking through the window and there were so many cars. She was watching and watching, looking out for her mother, like trying to uh, recognize if, if, that, if that person is her mother or father, but it was different. Who's that? Like she kept asking. She was scared. <laughs> she was tested for her hairy, but it was too ticklish. Yeah. When she finally heard something, it was so ticklish. She didn't know she was laughing because she was tickled <laughs> from the hairy yeah. aid. So they were bad. She didn't like them. She had them for like few minutes. A, a day, take them off and try it again because they were ticklish. So was that in Calumet or in Montreal? Where? In Montreal. Oh, Montreal. Montreal. So when you went to Mackay, you were there for three years? <laughs> yeah, three years. When I was growing up, I used to eat country food many times. When she was growing up, um, Animals she eat cooked raw or cooked frozen. She'll eat. And after when she went to Montreal, um, English food. She a woman came to serve her. She was going like this now, and she looked at the meal and she tasted. She tasted. <laughs> It was bad. She looked for she went she looked for garbage, throw it in the garbage. And then like when they were in a tent they just throw it out. But the whole thing she threw the whole thing in the garbage, the plate. She said she was gonna have water. There was just tea and tea. Like they only have tea. Then she started like bread or it was different, different from Bannock. It was bad. <laughs> Did she remember when he went to school that year or something like that? He mentioned he went out in 1961. He, came, he stayed for a year? A year and then came and back and, then and he never returned. He never returned. Yeah. He never returned. 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 Yeah. So they, she was growing up now, so the grandparents didn't have any kids of their uh -huh. own. Yeah. So they adopted him. So they said, no, you're not going back. Not going you back. can stay with us. Yeah. I don't think he liked the school much anyway. Eh? Yeah, he didn't. No. Too hot. Too hot. <laughs> too hot. Yeah, too hot for <laughs> Can you ask him the teachers in the classroom, were they signing or were they just talking? Or? Signing. Signing. Yeah. Mm. But it was different than the signing here, eh? Yeah. yeah. Different. Yeah. Different. Yeah. Some, some, are some different. same, some, some different. Same, some but there he learned some fingerspelling then. Right? Yeah.
Keep it. The ABCs. So he knows how to spell. Spell. Yeah. American. Yeah, we want to do it. We need to go to the office. All the time. Yeah, we should go. We want to do it. Ma, I need to do it. We need to do it. We need to do it. We need to do it. With her first one, she uh, had a hard time, but the other uh, three, other four, uh, she got used to because it was a lot easier for her uh, knowing that they are deaf too and yeah. that she was going to be coping with them. Yeah. But uh, for her youngest one, who's, uh, his name is Johnny, um, she had a hard time. Well, she. Uh, for him because when she would try and uh, tell him to go to school, uh, he would not want to go to school and make excuses such as the school is not, the school is smelly and that he gets headaches from them. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but he, she's very proud of him because he finished high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Graduated from school. Yeah, yeah. For Philip, uh, he attended a uh, school for the deaf in Winnipeg, but um, apparently his foster parents were um, mistreating him. Yeah, yeah. And um, my mother was worried that once he gets uh, bigger, that they were going to have a hard time with him. Yeah. And um, the way he was uh, telling my mom was um, that his foster parents were uh, mistreating him. Yeah. And, uh, as soon as he wanted to stop going to school, my mom just, um, you know, said, okay, that's, yeah. he's not going back to school. Yeah. Stay home. Yeah. They would have a hard time putting him on the plane, and that's when she, okay, she's, he's not going back to school yet. Yeah. And uh, when she went to education uh, to find out if Philip can go to school here, in uh, this, yeah, in the schools here, um, they were telling her that um, it's it costs too much to uh, bring up any kind of equipment to use for. Uh, teaching deaf students, right. and uh, she asked them, why is it so uh, expensive when other stuff that you try and get are the same amount? And yeah. that's when they, uh, you know, accept, started accepting uh, the fact that they going to have students who are deaf in the school. Right, in the school. Yeah. 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 No, she doesn't have very much to say now, but all she wants to say is she's very thankful. At least she has uh, not just one child who is deaf because uh, the other siblings who are the other four yeah. are deaf. Um, they can really communicate oh, with yeah. each other and yeah. even though they're really communicating, you can't hear them, but they enjoy themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was told that uh, Louisa had to leave and she didn't know what to say and um, she had no choice but to let her go and she was only like almost three. When she was three years old, uh, they told her that she'd have to leave uh, her family. She was only three? Yes. They sent her down to Winnipeg when she was three years when old. When she was three years yes. old? Yes. And they kept her in no Winnipeg word. for a long time and only after my parents moved to Rankin, they finally sent her to Rankin. Winnipeg, me in ya, me and the result in Yanan and Wakalakshani. Winnipeg, me in ya, love the cook of the new art to me. When she was down in Winnipeg, uh, she would be staying with foster home. Yeah. 
uh, foster parents, and after that, she was in Winnipeg for so many years, yeah. and later yes. on, she was sent to Vancouver to attend high school. Yeah. Uh, they would both be crying yeah. uh, before they would uh, depart from each other, and yeah. they had no choice. And no, they no. had no choice at all but to let her go, yeah. and they would both be crying. I started when I was 11 years old. I went to school in Edmonton there. And uh, that would have been in 60, well, 1961 till 68, and then I finished, or uh, just like. And when I first got there, I, le I was learning the basics, a lot of the stuff from the students. And it took me a while to learn, like, I guess about three months to learn the basics, the ABCs, like how to fingerspell and stuff like that. But after about three months, I really started picking up the language very, very quickly. So that was great for me. Uh, and then 1968, like, like I said, I was there till 68. Came back home, 
and then um, and actually it was interesting because when I came back to my home queue, my parents obviously were uh, speaking in Nuktitut and I didn't understand them and even just trying to figure out some of their lip reading was very difficult. Uh, so as a result of that, we actually, right at that time, started creating or started creating home signs or signs that were based on Inuktitut. Uh, I had the same experience when I was attending the Edmonton School for the Deaf, or because I just didn't understand the English. That was another process that I had to learn. It's another language. So simple concepts, simple nouns like chairs, stuff like that. But once I got used to it and was reading it more and working with it more, I acquired it quite quickly. My wife, she's hearing impaired. She went to school for the deaf at Edmonton for seven years when she was 11, starting when she was 11. And she has all this knowledge that she has from uh, learning sign language, American sign language. She always wants to teach what she learned in school uh, for the deaf children or even regular children so she can communicate with anyone. Uh, you see these deaf people in Nunavut, whenever they finally get together, boy, they feel like talking with their hands. They need to talk with their hands like we need to talk in our own innovative languages.